Hey golfers, it's Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter at Second Swing. It is time to check in uh, during week four of my training session as I search to increase my club speed. So I've been using the Super Speed Training System set, the men's set for the last four weeks, and it's really been exciting. So far, the first three weeks, I've gone from about 111.3 club speed when I first checked in, and I'm now just cranked out 116 miles an hour in the end of the third week. So fourth week, I'm gonna be anything from 116 up is gonna be a bonus here too. So definitely picked up quite a bit of distance as we've been doing this process. I'm really excited to bring you along and talk about the importance of club speed and how it can increase your distance as well. So super speed golf, definitely a great training option here overspeed training so far I have seen that I've picked up almost five miles an hour more club speed in about four weeks so today I'm actually going to go through the warm-up routine so I'm gonna go through the warm-up routine first it's really important to make sure your body is completely warm so when you're swinging that the, these sticks really really fast in, in front of the, the speed monitor you could definitely pull something. So you wanna make sure that your body is really nice and loose. So the nice thing is Super Speed has actually provided 11 exercises as part of their kind of warm up routine on their website. And I'm gonna go through those exercises today just to kind of teach you how to do them and just kind of go through that warm up routine before we start cranking out some uh, full swing speeds with a Super Speed stick and then testing my driver distance here at the end there too. Before I do start warming up and going through the warm up routine, I do ask that you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. We've got plenty more great content like this coming your way in the future. We thrive on creating club content and golf equipment knowledge on our channel there too. So we're definitely gonna be pushing that in 2021. So please do subscribe and please comment on our videos. We really appreciate it. So let's get after starting to kind of warming up a little bit here first. So as I mentioned on the Super Speed website, they have 11 exercises. The first exercise is ankle circles. So they suggest to use one of their Super Speed sticks out in front here and just to kind of help support your body a little bit. And then on both sides of your feet, we want to do some ankle circles. So we want to start rotating our, I'm starting with my right foot here now. I recommend doing it about 10 times each side. So right now I'm doing circles to the right, and now I'm gonna go back the other way, circles to the left. Really kind of helps work on my balance here a little bit here too. Trying to get these ankles to have a little bit more mobility to them there as well. Okay, so let's move to the left side here. So go around towards the stick. Okay, and then back the other way. I can definitely feel my ankles burning already. This is the exercise one of warm-up, so it might, might be a tough day here on, on the balance there as well. So that's the first exercise. That's the ankle circles. The next exercise is what they called heel-to-toe. So you still want to use this stick to support your, uh, your weight. So we want to start working on kind of rocking our, our body kind of back and forth, stretching our, our, our calves out a little bit. So. First thing we do is kind of start falling back a little bit. Probably just feet just under shoulder width apart. And then rock forward a little bit. And then rock back. Back on the heels. Forward on the toes. Do this 10 times here. I think I feel a good stretch on my, on my calves here as I'm doing this. So they suggest doing 10 reps each time you're doing this to warm up completely. All right, so I'm going to hold on to this stick for the next ex exercise, so for leg swings. So this is warm up exercise three. So we want to just work on swinging our legs a little bit here. It's a good one for the balance. <laughs> Trying to work on getting those legs nice and, nice and loose there. Let's go this way here. That's better. Just warming up on getting the, the body loose. Do 10 each side. Okay, that's the leg swings. So 10 each side, left and right. 
Then there is the stalk turns. So stalk turns, what you want to do is you want to use this for sure to support your body, have the foot kind of crossed in front, um, and just kind of wrap that leg kind of a little behind. And now we're just rotating our, our hips, trying to separate the lower body from the upper body. So we're trying to get that lower body to kind of turn in front. So this is a good one for the, for the hip turn. There we go. You're going to be nice and loose by the time that I start swinging these sticks today and generating some speed before we hit some drives. OK, so let's put the stick down briefly here. So the fifth exercise they recommend doing is called cats and dogs. I prefer doing this one kind of on the ground. Uh, you can definitely do it standing. I'll kind of show you both options there too. So on the ground, everyone's kind of done the, the, the cats and dogs on the ground when you move the pelvis up, head up. It's a really good stretch for the, for the uh, a lot of muscles actually. <laughs> I'm cramping up a little bit. Yeah, tight. Tight hip flexors. OK, so that's on, on, the, on the ground. Also, they, they said you can do a, a standing version here as well. So by doing that, you're really trying to get this, this hip to kind of tuck under and get your shoulders kind of across, and then just kind of going forward there as well. So this is definitely a, a very, very awkward move. But really want to try and get this back nice and, nice and round and get this hip pelvic up generate some curve on the on the back and then the opposite feeling there too so that's the the cats and the dog as i mentioned i prefer doing the doing it on the ground i feel like i get a real good kind of good stretch in there as well seems pretty simple but my body really feels it as well um, next is a frame so we want to make sure that we get our body to really kind of loosen up a little bit so a frame what we do is we put our hand kind of arm against our, our right knee, um, hand on the other knee, and then this, this arm here, all we're doing is extending that arm up. So across the, 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 the feet, up, getting that real good extension. I'm gonna do 10 of these on each side. I might do a couple shorter as I'm going through it today for the purpose of time. Okay, opposite side, so I'll lock that hand in with that knee there, and then Cry it across the body, extend the arm up. All right. Really feel like I'm opening up the, the shoulders by doing that there too. So we have three or four more to go here. So next is exercise number seven is the shoulder, shoulder clocks. So essentially what we're trying to do is trying to get our, our shoulders nice and warmed up. I like to do this by just kind of feeling like I'm rotating my shoulders back 10 times. So clock, clockwise and then anti-clockwise. So then have those shoulders going forward 10 times as well. Get the shoulders moving. All right. And then exercise eight is arm circles. So arm circles, kind of arms up here. What we're doing here is we're just kind of circling our arms. Start with kind of some smaller circles. Got the palm facing down right now. Do 10 and then start doing a little bit larger. Do 10 more larger ones. And then really kind of large circles here too. Get those shoulders, get those shoulders feel like they're burning. Good exercise here. And then opposite. So now hands, palms down. And then start with the small ones. A little bit larger. And then real large. You can definitely feel the, the shoulder burn as I'm doing this. Really big. Okay. Next is toe touches. So toe touches essentially is that we want to have our feet nice and nice and straight as we do that. So we want to feel a reach towards our, our feet if we can. If you can't quite reach, you can definitely unlock your knees a little bit here. And then what we're doing is we're just kind of going all the way down all the way up, and then reaching all the way up. Down, squat, up. So as we're doing this, we want to really work on that, on that pelvic tilt. 
So we want to make sure that we have a nice good tilt going on with our, our pelvis as we're doing this. We don't want to just, just jump straight down. We want to have a nice, nice turn right here, which is definitely easier said than done. But from here, we want to feel like the back's going straight down. We're reaching towards those, those toes. We lock ourselves in. We go all the way down. And then as we're doing this on the way back, we feel like we have a good pelvic tilt. And then all the way up there as well. Exercise 10 are, are skaters. So essentially, we're trying to skate to our side, to our side, jumping, kind of lateral, lateral jumps. I want to do 10 of these each side if we can. And then finally, we want to jump to doing some, uh, it's like 50% swings with the red stick. So the red stick, that's the heaviest stick of them all. So start out at kind of like 50%. Just trying to get our body kind of getting loose here. Do a few swings at 50%. And then start kind of warming up a little bit faster. Maybe jump to 60%. All right. So those are the 11 workout warm-ups that you should do before um, making sure that your body is nice and loose before you jump into doing the training program. You can find these 11 pre-warm-up routines on the SuperSpeed website. There's a video on there as well to tell you, take you through the process. So just wanted to make sure I bring that up today in today's video before we jump to doing the training session and start jumping to hitting some shots. So as it's week four, I'm still gonna stick to the training protocol one. I'm gonna stick to what Super Speed would recommend. I'm excited to try the new protocol two here in a couple of weeks. But week four, we're gonna stick with protocol one. So we know protocol one is we wanna make sure that we swing three forward normal golf swings, three reverse, essentially your left-handed golf swings with the light green stick, the medium blue stick, and the heavy red stick. We wanna do three step through right-handed, three step through left-handed with the green, blue, and red stick, and then finish off with three absolutely full max swings with the green stick there too. So I'm gonna do that really quickly before we hit some drivers to see where my, uh, see where my club speed's at today and how far I'm actually hitting my drives. All right, so got to 123. All right, got to 120 with the blue stick. All right, hovering right around about the 100 mark with the left-handed swing with both the green and the blue. All right, 117 with the red. All right, 94 with the red there. Okay, take a quick little breather here as I switch back to the, to the green stick. As I mentioned, last, last week I was at 116. So anything over 116 for sure is going to be a bonus. If I can get to 117, hey, I get to 117, but I'll take 116.1 today for sure. All right, like one, 119 with the step through. Got to 104 with the green step through. It's the fastest I've seen step through left-handed for sure. All right, the 122. 99 with the blue. Okay, one, 116 with the uh, red stick there, the heaviest one. Okay, that one was about 93 miles an hour, the red step through. Okay, finish up. Let's see what we can max this, this at out today, the green before we jump hitting some drives. All right, give it all on this one. One twenty four. 
All right. As you can see, you definitely wouldn't want to be swinging at that speed with a stiff body. You definitely might pull something there as well. Well, it's time. Let's, uh, let's test the driver today. See how we're doing for distance. If we can pick up just a little bit more club speed, I'm going to hit several drives and take a look at some numbers. Very nice. Wow. So a pretty, uh, pretty good first swing there. Crack the 170 mark with the ball speed. Love that. that felt pretty good. 115.5. Well, the good news is three swings in is the uh, club speed's been consistently a little higher, which is good. There we go. Took me a took me a few swings there, but we did get a little bit more club speed. One one sixteen point four. Full speed one seventy three on that one. Let's finish with a couple more swings. All right, might have got a little tired on that last swing. But what I wanted to show is I hit more shots today. So I wanted to show you that club speed retention that I have achieved. So as I mentioned, when I first started this, my club speed was about a 111.8 was my average club speed. Sorry, my, my club speed was a 111.3. We'll notice now I hit more shots. My club speed stayed pretty consistently between 114 and 116 there as well. So let's take a look at the numbers a little bit. Okay, so if we take a look at the numbers we're seeing, as I mentioned, I hit 10 drives today. I really wanted to show how consistent that swing speed stayed on 10 golf swings. Only I've only done five, but I really wanted to show that how important, not only this is going to give you more speed, but it's going to able, be able to give you more speed long term there as well. So if we look here, my club speed on average was 115.2 over the 10 swings. I did take out one miss hit there. That was the only shot that I did not carry the ball over uh, 300 yards. But you can see here, nine of 10 shots have been selected. And we'll take a look at the data there as well. That one miss hit did carry 297.7. So for what it's worth, that one was just a little bit spinnier. I didn't quite catch that one in the middle. You notice the spin rate on that one was about 2,700. But very, very good numbers over the court. So my club speed, my highest club speed I got to was 116.4. As I mentioned, I would take 116.1 today if I could get it. I got 116.4. So I'm still getting more club speed. So that's the number one goal. We take a look at other numbers. So we can see here my ball speed, my highest ball speed there was swing number eight. That ball speed was 173.8. Before that, in week two, I got the highest ball speed at 173.4. So I'm picking up a little bit more ball speed there across the board there as well. And once again, you can see that kind of that consistency there. There was only one shot. That was the last shot that I hit where that ball speed was under 170 miles an hour. And to be honest, four weeks ago, I couldn't even get close to the club speed numbers that we're seeing here today. And the consistency really, really impresses me across the board. I'm, I'm really impressed the fact that my club speed stayed very, very consistent across the board here today, which is very important because I'm excited that I can, can continue to have my club speed faster. So one thing to keep in mind is if you notice that you all of a sudden are generating a lot of club speed yourself by going through a super speed training program yourself, you might now actually fit into different golf clubs. So the golf shaft, for example, you may all of a sudden play, have to play a stiff shaft instead of a regular shaft or an extra stiff shaft instead of a stiff golf shaft. So keep that in mind because second swing does take in trades. So if you come in for a club fitting and all of a sudden your club fitter tells you, hey, that club is a little bit too light for you, a little bit too flexible for the club speed that you're seeing. We do take trades. So we take one of the highest level trade values in the country. It's a great way to help offset prices 
to help with your purchase on your new golf equipment there as well. Also, please make sure that you do subscribe to our channel. I'm excited to bring you guys this content. We've got plenty more great content coming your way in the future. I'm excited to show you how much more club speed that I can generate. So stay tuned as I continue through my super speed training program. Thanks for watching.